Sheila Patel, thank you so much for joining us here on Bloomberg. Now, I spoke to you a couple of months ago, and again, we were talking about uncertainty, not only in the Middle East, but here in Europe. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about inflation. Has anything changed in those last two months to, to make your job easier? Do you have more visibility on where the world economy is going? Mm -hmm. I think the job never gets easier, first of all, especially in an environment as changeable as this with the events in Japan and some of the challenges and concerns that are increasing around inflation. Uh, we see the job as being as tough as ever. I think that really what has changed is people's openness of approach and willingness to think about things in uh, different ways. Because the environment is so challenging, one has to. Uh, whether it's thinking about uh, investing in an unconstrained way in fixed income or uh, thinking about the commodities part of their investment strategy and perhaps expanding on that and deepening their awareness of how commodities are affecting their portfolio or uh, really an increasing, ever increasing openness to growth markets and appreciation of the role of the growth markets in one's portfolio. Those have been some of the encouraging developments, I think. And on the commodities, is there a trend for people to actually ask to get their money out of commodities, to put them mm -hmm. elsewhere because of this risk of inflation? And we're not really quite sure where China's going. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, we haven't seen a trend towards people moving money out of commodities. Uh, I'd say rather uh, there's a deep interest in having a more strategic viewpoint on commodities and importantly uh, being invested in a way that's quite nimble. So whereas people might have thought of things in a relatively indexed way before, it's clear that the environment is much too challenging and that a more fundamental, uh, extremely thoughtful approach to investing in commodities is necessary because the environment is changing so quickly. Uh, talk to me about the Middle East because last time, of course, we were right in the middle of a lot of the riots, a lot of the social unrest. Mm -hmm. Today, it seems to have stabilized somewhat, but the situation is really not clear at all. Mm -hmm. Do you have more clients from that region wanting to get their money possibly out of their country? Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly, uh, I'm flying soon after this interview to the Middle East, and I'll be there quite a bit over the next two weeks. And we don't see any change in terms of how clients there are thinking about their allocation locally versus globally. I think allocations and investing in the region, particularly among institutions, has always been quite global in nature. Uh, there, I think what you see is a, is a true realization uh, and focus on the ability of using these assets to help the populations there. And I think you see a tremendous energy and interest in continuing to be sure that the investments are being done in a proper way. But what do your clients tell you is most on their mind? Is there something that they're concerned about? We talk a lot about inflation. Mm -hmm. Are they worried that inflation will actually erode some of their growth? There's definitely concern about inflation. There's also concern about generating appropriate yield from the fixed income part of their portfolios. So in many cases, for example, uh, people had a relatively static view of their fixed income allocation. And some of their concern was around how they were dealing with equities. Now as they look back at fixed income, they say, maybe I need to take more of a total return approach. Uh, maybe I need to think about uh, giving a manager a more unconstrained ability to invest from a global perspective. Uh, for example, many people maybe had a more conservative view on their global government investments and weren't thinking as open-mindedly about emerging markets debt. Whereas I think today emerging markets debt, both hard currency and local, is comprising an extremely important part of people's fixed income allocation and we see that trend growing. And this has happened over the last couple of months. Does it just mean that people are actually uh, less risk averse? Well, I think it's a real challenge because at the same time that events may conspire to make people feel that they should be curta curtailing risk, uh, you actually are in an environment where if one does not take risk, one does not generate return. Yields are so constrained, it is so difficult to generate a return, risk is inevitable. And so the real thought process is around what risks can I tolerate, what guidelines should I have in place to manage those risks, and what investment products can yield me some return without having me go overboard. And I think that's why over the last couple of months especially, you have seen an increasing openness to potentially new ways to take risk, but always with the same backdrop of an uncertain world and a difficult environment where inflation, chasing yield, and the challenge of assimilating the growth markets and and the emerging market trend into one's portfolio are all facing investors. Sheila, in the Middle East, is it that little bit more stable in terms of geopolitical concerns? They have to face, of course, higher oil prices, higher mm -hmm. inflation, just like we do. Mm -hmm. 
but do you see a little bit of, of uh, a little bit more of a reassurance amongst investors that actually th the situation over there is also stabilizing? Mm -hmm. I definitely think we see more of a confidence among investors, and uh, we have offices around the region. We have people in Dubai, in Doha, in Riyadh, uh, and as I visit all those offices and talk to clients uh, in the region, uh, I would say in general uh, the confidence is there that uh, they've come through this difficult period, uh, that there are good things ahead, and I think the growth prospects are important. It's, it's a region uh, that from a, a GDP perspective is growing just as much as other emerging markets. It represents $1.4 trillion if you aggregate uh, the countries that make up the MENA region, Middle East and North Africa. So it's critical that this region is on a growth path along with the rest of the world. But in terms of, I guess, the risk or the geopolitical concerns, have they gone mm -hmm. from the Middle East to, to Europe, where actually we talk about Greece mm -hmm. possibly exiting? It, mm -hmm. it was denied, but right. still possibly exiting. Mm -hmm. At the Euro, we talk about restructuring. Mm -hmm. And overall, it seems that a lot of the peripheral countries will do worse than we were expecting. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, I think as uh, you ask about investors and where they're spending time or where their concerns are, how we invest in the periphery is probably at the top of people's minds now versus when we last spoke two months ago. In considering how we invest, the ways we manage risk when it comes to the periphery, and the questions that continue to come up uh, about uh, Greece and about the periphery broadly are really, really on investors' minds and a critical part of their management. Meaning that your investors are coming to you and saying, I want to take advantage of that and get a higher yield, or they're a little bit wary of actually investing because the situation still seems so unclear? I think generally uh, they're interested in the yields, but they're very wary of overweighting the situation. Uh, given how volatile it is, uh, given that in this region, obviously, we're dealing with uh, people whose home base is already in the euro, and in general, uh, as I think about the continental uh, European investor, they're already quite exposed. Uh, I think there's quite a bit of concern that we manage the exposure, we take advantage of opportunities as they exist in the periphery, but that we indeed manage the risks more carefully day to day than ever. Are you concerned about a possible breakdown of the euro? I mean, you know, we talk if there's some kind of restructuring, are we going to see a Lehman Brothers too? Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly, I think, uh, you know, you had uh, Jim O'Neill on Bloomberg just uh, a couple of days ago, our chairman, and, uh, you know, I'd say his concern is increasing. Our concern generally is increasing about the instability uh, that even discussion of a breakup of the euro or any kind of change in the structure uh, of the financial fabric here in Europe would have. I don't think we're at the point yet of worrying about any kind of Lehman II or a destabilization to the point of, uh, of a full breakup. But I do think the noise is concerning and what's critical is that it detracts from the ability that investment has to enhance growth in this region. Uh, because as you think about companies and uh, as you think about the international aspects of this region, uh, it's remarkable. Our European equities portfolio, for example, has 25% of its returns actually coming from uh, companies and their exposure to the growth markets. So if they have to turn inwardly focused, if there's a concern about stabilization of the region, of the currency, of, of uh, the status in Europe, uh, they can't be outward focused. They can't yeah. be generating business and generating growth for the economies here. And that's a critical factor we're watching. And Sheila, if there is actually a change in the status of the Eurozone, mm -hmm. it, it, does it also mean that actually as GSAM you're going to be much more concerned about investors wanting to just get out of the market and, and you know, ride it out? Mm -hmm. I certainly think there is that concern. I, I think for many investors we deal with, certainly in this region, they don't have that option. Uh, when their home currency is the euro, or even here in the UK, uh, it's very difficult to say, I can sit on the sidelines, yeah. which is why the risk management angle of it is so much more critical. Uh, it, it would always be preferable to be able to say in a volatile situation, I'd like to step back and be completely out of it. But I think when you look at modern asset allocations uh, that we see clients have all around the region and all around the globe, Europe is too big to step back from. Yeah. And so it's all about understanding the situation day to day and managing it with a very critical eye. Sheila, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.